like we're starting over again. There's all the, the initial excitement. You've got a new record, you've got new songs to play, and, and uh, to be honest, we're having a great time, aren't we? Fusing the, the DJ thing with a bit of live stuff with Steve singing and percussion. We love performing, we love getting up on stage and playing no matter what, so just, just to be back doing that regularly, so you know, it's great. We've been here for a week and every day's been fantastic, so you, you're starting your day like that. You're strolling up the street to get a coffee in flip-flops and shorts. You don't get that in London. New York used to have lots of stuff. London used to be really good, but now um, dance music is really, really massive here in LA. And um, all the producers that I know, all my friends from Europe are moving here. The 12 hour flight's a bit of a long commute, but... Uh... You're not Paul anymore, you're Paul. Oh, yeah. Pa. <laughs> <laughs> easier now to release stuff. You can just put something on the internet and that's it, it's available. Obviously you've done the Supper Club Saturday and you'd hear about it a week later or something. Like them Googled it the next day, it's like zzz, 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 on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. Upload to YouTube a new song you made this afternoon and that's it. It's open for millions of people to listen to. The LA to me at the moment seems to be, I'm going to get shocked for this, probably the capital of dance music in America. You know, when, when that call came through that Mitsubishi wanted to use the, the song in the commercial, through EMI we were with Capital Records over here and they were like, we need you out here now. It's going nuts over here. There was so much stigma about using your music or letting it be used, almost like selling out. And, you know, for us, we, we, we saw the previous commercials and looked at it and, and thought, well, you know, it'd be a good thing to do. Then the floodgates kind of opened. The British, you know, the British press are like, oh, you've sold out. And now everyone, absolutely everyone wants to sell everybody out. <laughs> wants to yeah. put a song on a commercial. <laughs> Nobody's making money from, from selling records, so you have to think outside the box. And, you know, having a song on a commercial that's going to be shown in the middle of the Super Bowl is, is like, who's going to say no to that now? Absolutely nobody. Everybody mm. does it. Just ask our lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> Over the years, we've fought for almost, we've all been best friends, and we've stopped for a few years to separate and go and do separate things. I think when you have a break away from each other, you know, what, for whatever reasons, whether it's a friendship, a business, a partnership, whatever, you, you know, you, you kind of, you miss certain things. You know, when you come away from that, when it's not necessarily your job, or what is, you know, what is the most, you know, when you wake up in the morning, that's the only thing you've got to try and do. It's, it's like you become a fan of it again, and, and we just, uh, it, it was just so natural to do it. We got in the studio, literally in a week or so, we started to do two or three tracks. Steve would go back and play and work with them, and we'll work with the tracks back in London. And it just seemed to be quite natural, things were coming together, probably the best that we've ever had. And to be honest, I think the record that we've made, is probably the best thing we've done. They worship like I like we never stop, we're just a little bit older. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. Not sure about being wiser, but certainly wiser. No, we're not wiser. No.